Hi students, it's Dr. Ogden. We're going to try recording this one outside. So in this lecture I just really want to quickly talk about viruses and we're going to talk specifically about the HIV virus and, and what that means. So viruses are this amazing group of, and some people would classify these things as organisms, others would not, but they're these group of biological entities that um, can be very simple, such as over here where you have just an RNA coil with these um, capsomere around it, this, these capsids that come around it, or they can be much more complicated. Uh, they can have multiple capsids on the inside of a membranous envelope. Um, they can even have this shape where you have a head and a, with the DNA in the inside and then they, it has this teeth, this tail, and um, these tail fibers that are used basically as an injection tube. Um, so there's really quite a huge variety of viruses. Um, in these two tables here you can see, for example, viruses can be both double-stranded DNA. For example, so here we have viruses like um, Papi, Papovirus, which causes warts and cervical cancers, or the hesp, uh, herpes viruses, which cause um, cold sores and genital sores and even the shingles and chicken pox and some of these other things. Um, pox viruses which cause smallpox. Or you can have single-stranded DNA. And I know that sounds weird because we've usually said that DNA is always double-stranded, but in viruses you can have single-stranded DNA like this um, parvovirus. You can also have double-stranded RNA, right, which is also different from what we've said before. You can have single-stranded RNA viruses that, all, that where the RNA is serves as a messenger RNA only. So these are things like the common cold viruses, SARS, yellow fever, rubella. Then you can have single-stranded RNA viruses that serve as a template for mRNA synthesis. So they're directly, um, they're, they're used to just make more mRNAs. And things like this are like the Ebola virus and influenza virus, rabies. Or you can have single-stranded RNA viruses that then become a template for DNA synthesis. And um, HIV is one of these, for example. And that's the one that we'll be looking at in more detail. So the HIV virus, which then leads to AIDS, is what's called a retrovirus. And so as we just saw, it's a single-stranded RNA virus. And um, it's constructed with an envelope that has these proteins around it. It has the RNA, and on the inside it has these reverse transcriptase as well. So a retrovirus then is called this because it's an RNA virus that then reproduces itself by using mRNA, uh, RNA molecules retrotranscribing them back into DNA and then inserting that DNA into the the genome of the host. Now as it does this it must copy then that RNA back to DNA using reverse transcriptase and it turns out that reverse transcriptase is not very accurate at, 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 at replication or at uh, transcribing, retrotranscribing from RNA to DNA. It makes lots of mistakes, many more mistakes than you know RNA polymerase for example. And so if you think about it, 0.2 errors per genome, that's basically 20% of all of the new viruses that are produced have some type of mutation in them that are different. And this is what makes HIV so dangerous, is, is that it is a fast evolving um, virus. And so it's constantly kicking out new forms of itself that then, um, as you know, the doctors and things have a hard time coming up with ways to deal with these new viruses. So here, this phylogenetic tree is showing us the relationships of HIV to other forms of viruses. And it turns out that HIV virus is most closely related to SIV, simian virus. And as you can see, the HIV-1 group is related to a bunch of chimpanzees, whereas the HIV-2 virus is most closely related to the Sudi Mangabe monkeys. So it seems then that the virus, the evidence supports that HIV has evolved from, um, from chimps once to HIV-1 and from the mangabe monkeys 
to HIV-2. So there's been two independent origins for HIV, and then there's been subsequent um, infections from chimpanzees to humans, maybe multiple times for both viruses, potentially. So a more simpler way of looking at this is um, HIV-2 and SIV are, um, HIV-2 is most closely related to the Mangabe SIV, HIV-1 is most closely related to the SIV coming from the chimps, and we think that the ancestor probably to all of these was a feline um, virus so coming from, from, the, from the lions and their rel relatives. So as I said, HIV is one of the fastest evolving organisms. If once it gets inside of uh, the blood and then starts to infect a white blood cell, it only takes about two and a half days for it to be then begin reproducing more viruses. But once it begins to do that, and you've now and, and uh, a host has a bunch of their white blood cells infected, basically the virus can produce 10 to the 10 or 10 to the 12 new viruses every day. So these are huge numbers of viruses. And remember that 20% of those viruses are new with, with different um, mutations that are occurring. So the way that it infects a cell is here's the virus. It, it comes and it binds to a white blood cell, the host cell, and the white blood cell has all around it, here it doesn't show them all over, but on here, over on this side it's showing that it has these proteins, these, these things that stick out, like this CD4 protein here and a chemokine receptor. These are proteins, and what's important about proteins is their shape, and so you get a matchup of the shape with the CD4 and the chemokine receptor, and once that happens, the virus now fuses and inserts its uh, core into the cell. And then you get the encoding, and eventually the RNA then retranscribes its RNA um, with those reverse transcriptome transcriptase that are there into DNA. That DNA then gets inserted into the genomic DNA of the host and then transcription occurs of those genes and you get the viral products. You get viral RNA that then is transcribed and then those viral products go through translation, become proteins and all of the other stuff that it needs to become. It all gets assembled and then you get the budding off of the virus and again Many, many, many of these are happening each day in each cell. Now, once the viral load gets high enough and symptoms become such, a doctor then who's specialized in this will um, diagnose someone as having AIDS. So AIDS is not necessarily um, the disease itself. AIDS is a combination of the viral loads plus all of the um, symptoms that are associated. It actually stands for the Inquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, and uh, it's caused by the HIV infection. But you can see here, here's an actual white blood cell, and all of those little red dots are all of the HIV viruses trying to infect. Um, there's been lots of different treatments for, for HIV and AIDS. Um, some of the earliest treatments were things like where they would make a drug that mimicked a nucleotide so that when it when the virus went through reverse transcript um, through the reverse transcription process they would pick up these false nucleotides and include them in in the process and one of these was called AZT so you can, as you can see AZT looks a lot like a nucleotide or a thymine nucleotide but there's a difference here coming off of the C you have an N3 group instead of an OH group and that little difference there though makes that included AZT into that growing DNA chain, not real DNA, and so it never gets inserted and never then passes, um, can make more viruses. So many people ask, how can you avoid HIV? Well, you think about how is it passed on. So HIV can be transmitted through these liquids, blood, semen, vaginal secretions, and milk. So basically, if, if you um, avoid activities that allow the transmission of HIV, then you can avoid um, contracting uh, HIV, so you know, no unprotected sex, no direct blood contact, including drug needles and transfusions, and then also there's that chance of the mother to baby.